Same old crap, just a different day, and we are going to put this at rest. Now you got this nitwit filing a Supreme Court brief supporting New York uh, gun control law. Number one, not Congress, no part of the federal government is allowed to pass any of these firearm laws. They are unconstitutional. This is your uh, constitution, people, is the supreme law of the land. It overrides everything else. Now these nitwits are saying that they're using this long-standing proper cause requirement does not violate the Second Amendment. But it's not absolute. Well, you're wrong there. You're absolutely wrong. Yep. Now down here, get, oh, I, want, I want, want to get this on there because this has an, an awful lot to do with what the hell they're doing. And what they're saying here is uh, they're trying to use Commerce Clause and all that other stuff and says, as an extensively regulated commerce in, in arms, all these regulations pass constitutional muster. No, they don't. The Supreme Court gave the uh, Congress more power by extending the commerce. It's not what it says in the Constitution, does it? They're adding uh, waterways and all this other stuff, and they, that's not what they were, it's not what it was set up for. It was only commerce meant the free flow of goods between the states so that one state couldn't uh, charge... Uh, uh, taxes and tariffs on it doesn't mean what it says what they're trying to make it say today we're going to get over here for another second <clears throat> hang in there people I want you to I want you to see this I've showed it to you before we're going to do it again this is a preamble to your Bill of Rights Congress of the United States, 1,789. The convention of a number of the states, having at the time of adopting the Constitution, they adopted it, hadn't had, they didn't ratify it yet, expressed a desire in order to prevent misconstruction or abuse of its powers that further dictatory and restrictive clauses should be added. That way uh, you would be insured of, of the benefits so, what's it say here? A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms should not be infringed. Now, you got to remember that the, the preamble to the Bill of Rights is part of your constitution. And they weren't going to ratify this constitution until all these safeguards were put into place because they know you can't trust government. Okay, now, what gets me, people, you're not paying, you're not paying a whole lot of attention. I'm having a heck of a time today. The U.S. Constitution is the supreme law of the land, and for any statute to be valid, it must be in agreement with it. It is impossible for a law which violates the Constitution to be valid. All laws that are repugnant to the Constitution are null and void. Now, back in the day, what's, what, what has happened is... Uh, after the Civil War, certain individuals decided, well, you know, uh, they saw no room in American Jewish prisons for Blackstone's God-based views of nature. So they did, had a deliberate effort by the president then of Harvard to change things to introduce the evolution of teaching the law. So they hired this guy to 
uh, be the dean of the law school, and he changed from using Blackstone commentaries to that had Im immutable principles to a law of case approach, studying the writing of judges. So they're not studying the, the, the Constitution anymore, people. What they did was to change everything from the focus of God uh, uh, to the judge. The judge who was writing the law. By studying law cases over time, they, they were able to show an evolution of the law. Then, judges began to accrue more power. And at, at this guy's law class in Vanderbilt University, one of the better law schools in the country, we never read the Constitution. We only read what judges said about it. Thus, it became common that judges became a law unto themselves. So you got these people saying, oh, it passed constitutional muster. No, these people did not study the Constitution. They only studied what other judges said about it. You catching on? If you read your Constitution, I mean, it's plain. And it is absolute, just like the Bible. It's absolute. The federal government, the Second Amendment to our federal Constitution, recognizes that it's a God-given right to keep and bear arms and it's to be free from any interference whatsoever from the federal government. Accordingly, the federal government is nowhere in the Constitution granted authority to abridge, restrict, or infringe in any fashion whatsoever guns and ammunition. Thus, all restrictive laws made by Congress, all regulations made by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms are unconstitutional as they are outside the scope of powers granted to Congress and to the executive branch by our Constitution. Restrictions of arms and ammunition is not one of the enumerated powers delegated to the Congress or to the executive branch. I mean, they've, they've tried to use the Interstate Commerce Clause. Well, I'm sorry. That Interstate Commerce Clause is not in the Constitution. That was that that was uh, uh, done by the Supreme Court. And they had no right to do that. You cannot give the government more power than they already had. <clears throat> they try to use the General Welfare Clause. You can't use that. The Necessary and Proper Clause. You can't use that. The co that clause only permits the execution of power already delegated and enumerated in the Constitution. No additional substantial powers were granted to the clause. Show you something here, people. Every part of the Constitution is important. If you let the government ignore parts of it, soon they will ignore all of it, and that's just what's been happening. If you think the flu was scary, you should see what government can do with unarmed citizens. The Constitution is not a document for the government to restrain people. It is an instrument for the people to restrain government. Patrick Henry. So now you've got the gist of it. And we're going to go back here one more time so you understand something. This is part of your Constitution. That's why it was, nothing was ratified before because of they wanted these extra uh, clauses put in there to make sure that there's no misconstruction or abuse of powers from the government. Now they put this in in 1789, and you all, everybody knows it wasn't ratified to 1791. Look it up, people. It's in your Constitution. You don't know because you don't read it. If you don't read it, you can't understand. If you can't understand, you can't fight back. The government has no authority whatsoever. None. Absolutely none. We'll do this again. The Second Amendment to the Federal Constitution recognizes that this is a God-given right to keep and bear arms and it's to be free 
from any interference whatsoever from the federal government. The federal government is nowhere in the Constitution granted authority to abridge, restrict, or infringe in any fashion whatsoever guns and ammunition. Thus, all restrictive laws made by Congress, all, regu all regulations made by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms are unconstitutional as outside the scope of powers granted to Congress and to the executive branch by the Constitution. Restriction of arms and ammunition is not one of the enumerated powers delegated to Congress or to the executive branch. Let's go over here just another second. I want to see the Second Amendment there. Well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms should not be infringed. Now, looky there. Is there any subparagraph A, B, C, or D that would stipulate what an acceptable infringement would be? Nope. There are none. You tell your Congress and your Senate and everybody else up there in D.C. Get off the case. You're doing this to get to gather more power and control over the people. And you're not allowed. You, under, you don't understand. The Constitution is ours. It's not yours. The government is ours. We're the boss. You're not. It don't matter what they try to do or how much money they throw at it. They're wrong. And any member of the Supreme Court that can't see, can't understand this, then these are the people that study the writing of judges and make, making the judge law, not the Constitution. You've got to understand what's going on up there. These people, they think that they're well educated. They are not. If they were well educated, we wouldn't be fighting this fight right now. Thanks for watching.